We're about to look at five things that relate to Olympic weightlifting and knee pain. And we're gonna start right now. The classic ATG leg day coming in right now. Yeah. First step, let's get these belts on. So once it's on, let me watch out for the mic here. Once it's on, sweep it out of the way so it's not gonna be in the way of your feet. Okay. And then we're gonna start out, we start out intentionally slow. So get your chest all the way in there. Yep, and now intentionally go slowly. This gives us time to think about the intention of our big toe. So if you think about most of the lifting we do, we're flat footed. The sled is allowing you to get loading going through the big toe and the fascia of the foot. Similar thing here, start getting a little momentum start getting it moving. Now what you're thinking is to get your toe behind your knee each step. It doesn't have to be a big step, but that's how you know if you have too much weight. Okay. So if you're just like this, you're, you're using your body to move the sled Not instead no. of using the VMO to, use the, to move the sled. So yeah, you look kind of like Michael Jackson doing a moonwalk. It doesn't have to be a big step though. Yep, just getting those toes right behind the knees. Nice, very nice. Right back to here. Yep, we'll think a little bit, a little bit faster. Think nice long strides here. Think about that big toe all the way through the stride. My quads are already smoked. <laughs> <laughs> now a little bit and stay smooth. Yep. All you guys have to do is try to keep your sled at the same pace as mine. Notice how mine's this smooth tempo. Because we can use our weight, but if you're moving it smoothly, you'll notice the muscles burn more. <laughs> that's it, that's it. <laughs> Imagine if you did this every session, think about the effect on your feet. So the effect on the feet, nice, is we just see those foot pains start to go away. What about the effect on my heart? <laughs> well, I would vote it the number one heart health exercise because <laughs> you get that kind of vigorous, that kind of vigorous blood flow that your heart needs. Yeah. So for an athlete, we don't do any running. We just play our sport and sled. That's it. Good. And this will allow this will allow him to get knee rehab going. Good, especially on the backward. That backward <laughs> is really for the feet. Good. Good job. We're at four out of eight. We got four more. Four now, more. Now's where I start increasing the speed. Now I'm thinking a jump. So every step, I'm thinking like it's a jump. And on the backward, say you can push yourself, but with less knee pain, but you can push that, that knee strength. That's it. I'd say it's better than a PRP injection. Good. Hang with me, hang with me. Think jump, 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 jump. That's it, that's it. Nice. You got a savage with me. Hell yeah, we're on number six. Good job. Good. Push, push. Hard as you can. Good job. We got two more. We got two more. Dig deep. Yeah, yeah. Jump, jump, jump. That's it. Good job. Yep, yep. Work it. Hell yeah. Oh God. One more. Oh my God. One more. Last one. Last one. What do you got? What do you got? Oh. Good. Good. How hard can you push your body? The harder you push, the more bullet first you get with the sled. You can quite literally make your body age younger from sled training. Recap, you've seen it online. What's the sled like in real life? Horrible. It was very challenging, but not like technique wise. It was just pushing yourself, your heart rate goes up, quad pump, 
I wasn't ready. <laughs> I was not ready. <laughs> I have a plan to be stronger backwards than everybody I meet. Knee over toes guy, you're not stronger than me backwards. <laughs> so it was, it was great, phenomenal. Sweet. That's, that's my king lift. So my king lift isn't a squat or a bench or a deadlift or a clean or a snatch. My king lift is the sled, but he can use that to get knee rehab in a way that's going to contribute to his max power rather than taking away from him. You can use that. Notice at the end when we're going forward. Yeah. Look at the angle our body's in. Right. You can use that to push your strength, but in a way that, look, we just got our cardio in. No, uh, no more cardio. I was going to say, too, one of the things when you were cueing, like, almost like jumping with it, yeah. my feet started to wake up more and my quads were just smoked. Yeah. But then it was like on the way back, the way back I was dying, but it was like a scenario where the way I felt it, I mean, I, I almost equated it to like wrestling or, or football where you're driving somebody. Yeah. The exact same feeling, so it was great. Sweet. <clears throat> so yeah, that's, that's my foundation of the program. The session starts with sled. Cause my mom's on the program too. Okay. She comes in. I take the weight off the sled. <laughs> I take the weight off the sled. She does that. If she said, "That's all I want to do today," I would say, "Awesome." Yeah. Yeah. My photographer doesn't work out, but he's been sledding every day. Oh, good. Because it's kind of addicting. Because yeah. you don't have the pain. You get the pump. You get the sweat. You're breathing hard, but you don't have the pain. I think that's the other thing. It's like you, you had mentioned. You know, we got the cardio out of the way. It feels like. When I, when I want my quads to blow up, I might do like two sets of 30 on leg press yeah. just to get huge pump. But that actually here feels better. Like I have a bigger quad pump than I would even on the leg press. Yeah. And when you're pushing by pushing through those toes, I think there's something different about it. For yeah. Knee health the activation. Than when there's, when there's nothing right. just on a leg extension or even a leg press, the foot is flat. Right. So trust me, I did boatloads of leg extensions and leg presses. They didn't give me the result I was looking for, which yeah. is what freaky healing and that crazy jumping. Right. So squatting, deadlifting, Olympic lifting, all ways of getting stronger. Yep. So your body is easier to move and mm -hmm. you can express more. And I feel like my role in the system is just showing people that this can have a place yeah. for someone older who wants to be able to go play basketball. They can deadlift a truckload, but they can't play without their knees hurting. Right. Or for someone younger who already has so much beating. So he could replace a couple sessions a week and go hard on the sled for a strength. Or maybe what I do is I hit the sled even before I play, about 30 to 60 minutes before. Eventually that pump starts to go away. Right. You go through your warm up. So he could then start going through his technical, you know what I mean? His yeah, technical his progression. lifting progression. Right. You never know what could happen. Yeah. I don't know what'll happen. It'd be interesting to see when he I, does it. I was even thinking with I Jake. Face right, now. <laughs> well, right now, yeah. yeah. But one of the things. But well, maybe he has hidden adaptation. Well, and that's, yeah, that's the other thing. Maybe the VMOs would grow even more he, so from he, doing that pre. Dude, you, when we were doing the pull got, backwards. Look, he, veins are yeah, coming out of blowing the VMO. Out. So that doesn't necessarily grow the VMO, but perhaps if that became part of his routine, it could then heal. when he does the training, he might get more activation and right. might actually, it might grow more and, he's, and heal faster. He's typically someone who will catch a clean and it might crash on him a little bit. And he can, you know, he's an animal so he can grind it out. But now he trains the backward sled pull one, you meet the bar a little bit tighter, and then if we're talking about vertical jump too, yeah. that's gonna help you when you're, when you're grounding yeah. on the vertical jump. Yeah, and where I think it's gonna matter is, how old are you? 24. All right, 24. Where do you wanna be lifting when you're 30, yeah. 40? Yeah. It's not saying to even change what's worked for you, but perhaps find that in its place. So, yeah. you guys ready for part two? Yeah. All right. Wow, look at that. That's, see, that's, that's pretty world-class there. Good, come back up. Good, this was, this was insane. Length through there. So this is amazing, amazing mobility. And for him, getting, getting this full pause out of this position. Okay. And then over time, we'll, so we'll do a few sets today and we'll load and see where he's at. Okay. Good job. So I think this is a great time to train that paused position because Olympic weightlifting is your sport. Yeah. You don't necessarily want to be training in confusing intentions for your sport. So this is kind of nice that you could treat this as accessory work to your Olympic lifting. And 
Would you would pause? You, do you think that this would be better as a warm up or as an actual accessory for weightlifting? So I use this in my training, not as something before basketball. Okay. So before basketball, I hit the sled to get that pump, right. and then I would start my basketball warm-ups. Okay. So for him, it's possible that he could use this as a like mobility warm-up, but really the intention of this, this is our first set. The intention of it is, is to treat this as a strength exercise, but no, notice how the weight is not going to make me shorten my range. I'm still thinking how long can I get. So pausing in this position, now having to explode out, this now becomes a strength movement. Okay, okay. So I think this would be, because you have that eccentric load, I think this would be more fatiguing for his Olympic lifting. So I would either do it on its own day, okay, or after his main lifts. So this could be as like- As accessory, meaning he could, get a, he could get extra work on that push out of the hole. Okay. And if you notice the angle, we're not going straight down. It's like It's forward. diagonal. What yeah. that means, is that you actually get a lot of load in this position. So when you're holding weight too in this position, but notice when I come out of it, think, think Olympic weightlifting. Olympic weightlifting, you'd have to shoot up. With this, we're going out. So every inch out, it gets easier. Yeah. Meaning proportionally, it's really loaded in that deep position. Are your knee hurts? No, I, well, I just wanted to take time to tell Ben that I have actually zero knee pain. Wow. Oh, that's good. That's epic. Literally at all. Like, that's he epic. was, he the was back here shaking his head and I'm like, oh. Jake's hurt. Sitting here on the airplane, like trying to figure out a way that I could sit so I didn't feel like my legs were gonna explode. Wow. And I like blood flow. So weird. Yeah, 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 yeah. And my legs are destroyed. Like, yeah, but that's yeah. still my good. If I could only do the sled and this, I'll, I'd still dunk till I'm 50. Yeah. I'd still be dunking at 50, and I'd still have really good knee quality of life. So if I sled every day. You don't you have to do it every day, but... But you promise I'll be able to dunk. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the contract. Yeah. You get your money back. If you... <laughs> this is outstanding form. This might be the first... This might be the best first split squat I've ever seen. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he's going to talk think, about this for a month and a half. <laughs> I, I, think his, I think his body, because of how explosive he is, doing double body weight snatch, yeah. so much force... I think his body needs that blood flow okay. to heal faster. I think for him the sled, I think for him the sled is more about healing, and it's probably going to take some weeks to get that blood flow in there consistently. <laughs> right, right. All right, La last set. Twelve and a half kilos. Me. Yep. Last set. You're up. We're going to talk about why this would relate to <laughs> knee pain for an Olympic weightlifter. So, for an Olympic weightlifter, it would be possible to have one side. Wow, look at that. And for the record, best first time doing ATG split squats I've ever seen. So you could have two sides that don't feel exactly the same in the bottom of a squat. This also gives you, without any ego in it, you don't have to think about your squat numbers. You can really milk this pause position down here. Nice. Give me a couple more reps. And then the hidden aspect of this is the back leg. You're stretching out and strengthening those hip flexors at the same time. So it's possible as an Olympic lifter not getting into that extension through the glute. There could be some missing links for knee protection just through that back leg. That's from Kelly Sturette. So I would suggest following Kelly. He's the one who, who pointed out that this back, this whole, this whole stretch right here could also relate to why people see reduction of knee pain. Okay. Because you're not just relaxing there. So you're lengthening the quad then. Yeah, and yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we're getting that, we're getting that at the same time as, as you're getting that nice pause going out of the bottom position. Good. So he's loading through those hip flexors the entire time. Beautiful. Also, Great a lot job, of people Jake. will ask about this. Great job. A lot of people will ask about this, and I like to use an Olympic weightlifting shoe. It doesn't, it doesn't mean you have to, but even for me, okay, I have full range here, but if I elevate my heel, it's even more range. Right, right. So we're not using this for the ankle side of the equation. We're using this for the knee and the hip. How much knee and hip range of motion can we get? That's outstanding. This Killed is, it. I would okay. suggest keeping that in once a week. Yeah, Three to five sets, four to six reps. I feel like Jake, once a week. You, you could do this on like an athlete day, even like unloaded. Like switch my athlete day to this day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. entire day. Yeah. 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 So this is the Watson Tibialis machine. I put, this is probably the best innovation on the market. You can load up one side at a time. You slip your foot in there. You can go to the edge of a bench, load plates. Mm -hmm. Now, 
this is an actual tibialis machine, I think these should be in every gym too. Yeah. So go ahead and put your hands there. Good. And now lift up the weight and now slide so your heels are down. Good. Now I want you to sit your butt back until you feel a little stretch there through the front ankle. You feel a bit through mm -hmm. there? Good. Now flex up, hold, good. And then lower down. So these we do three sets, 10 to 20 reps twice a week. Meaning if you get 20, you probably need more weight. If you can't get 10, you go less. Now it's a short range of motion. So it's not that many reps. It's not like doing 10 to 20 on a squat. So for an Olympic weightlifter, you're crashing in a ton of force in, in these positions right mm -hmm. here. So for one thing, this is gonna allow you, instead of it just crashing in, you're gonna actually have more flex in there yourself. So as, as you, the harder you can flex in there, nice, the more strength you have there, it's just gonna take pressure off. So this is, this is not a primary knee bulletproofer, it's a secondary knee bulletproofer. Now imagine in sports how many of those injuries happen. We don't have a choice, this is how we decelerate. Yeah, go to, the, go to tap out. I'll have, you guys do, I'll have you guys do two sets today. You gotta, gotta go to tap. You're still doing good, still doing good. Three more, here we go, here we go. Nice. So again, the blood flow factor for the knees, old ankle injuries. Yep. Good job, that was a good one, that was a good one. Hell yeah. All right, you're up, you're up. Dude. Be careful walking around because you'll expect your toe to lift. Yeah. So you'll like, you'll, you'll trip on a curve or something. That's after the sled. The yeah. only reason I laid on the ground was because I actually couldn't stand up. The, the reality for team sport athletes is when we go to slow down, we go through the heel. Yeah, yeah. It's not whether that's most efficient or not. That's how Michael Jordan jumps from the foul line. It's right. how LeBron James does every dunk. Yeah. It's how guys how stop. Yeah, yeah. So body weight wise on this machine, I find that you want to get to where 10% 10, 10 of your weight each side is pretty easy. So this is, you're like 70 kilos? Oh, yeah. the last one there. 70 kilos? Yeah. So basically, he'd want to work till seven kilos each side is pretty easy. This is four and a half kilos. Slide your heels back a touch. Think like the, so the heat. Yeah. That, that'll, yeah, that's good right there. There you go. There you go. Now flex. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that's the reality. He has smaller shoes. Someone probably this probably needs to be adjustable. Okay. He also might. <laughs> you also might find some areas working, like your toe flexors and stuff. Good job. So this is four and a half kilo. You want eight kilo to be. Yeah. Like that. To have less. To have less trauma coming up through here. This also the tibialis wraps around to the inside. Right there. Most people think it's just right here. Just on the front, but it no, comes it actually across. wraps around. So a lot of people have yeah. pain even in here. That's right so, where I feel it. So pain in there is going to be a combination of the tibialis and then also the soleus right there. Okay. And when we're doing all that sled driving, that's the trick with the soleus, is you can do straight leg calf raises all you want. When we're now sled driving, we're in that position. So Kelly, Kelly calls the, the forward sled perhaps the best Achilles bulletproofer. So if you're getting soleus, that lower deeper calf muscle, and then tibialis wrapping around there, you can pretty much bulletproof those shins. Nice. Now to, to save time, I'm not gonna do that one. This is oh, you. Oh, oh. He now, said, now he said I one, have to do this one. This one, don't freak out at first. Number one, I don't have an opinion on how these should be performed. I simply copy Marty St. Louis. Okay. Do you remember him, hockey player? Uh -uh. Marty was undrafted, ended up being Stanley Cup champ, MVP, and when he was in his late 30s, leading the league in scoring with gray hair. He was the only guy in the gym who, who, could, who could do this, which is, which is specifically, so I'm fighting that eccentric. If that's all you did, I would say that'd be great. Okay. But what he did is he would also then contract the glutes so the abs come off the bench and pull. Okay. If the, imagine if the hip goes off first, you can cheat it up. That's like As an Olympic weightlifter, there. I consider this in the Olympic weightlifting family because you're having to learn how to explode through the glute and then pull. Yeah, it's, ex it's like, it's explosive knee flexion, which, yeah. I mean, that, that also will help. That's neural the, drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's neural drive, then this is structural, structural, yeah. structural, structural. So I think as well, I think thickening up these tendons on the way down, I think it's really helpful for Olympic And it'll help like, put the brakes on with, like if you co-contract yeah. with your quads, your hamstrings, exactly. and you're catching it clean. Exactly, so, yeah. so what yeah, we yeah. know for sure is that Fighting down on Nordics, good idea. Yeah. Doesn't seem like a good idea to be weak 
at your knee being pried out. Right. You want to be strong at your knee being pried out. However, I find people make better results when they learn how to tap into it. But I'll have him go first. Yes. Because then for yours, I'm going to elevate the bench a little, okay. and you're going to see it's the same drill. Okay. So, so you want me to go slide down in there. Slow like you did. Yeah, because that's the most important part. So going down slow is the most important. Press your toes. Press your toes. Yeah. No, no, yeah, you had it right. Oh. Exactly. So you actually want to engage and press into the foot plate. Okay. Pushing that foot that's plate. That's it. More. Outstanding. Now from here, grab your shorts. It's a good way to learn it because you can't like cheat. Now you're gonna you're gonna contract your glutes and then pull. Come yeah, on, yeah, Jake. Yeah. Think like a snatch at the top. Get of the, it. There it is. Good. Yeah. Good. Now, now what he what he did right there. I'm grabbing my lat. Probably from grabbing like that. Yeah. Well, random cramp. I've never seen a lat cramp. Before, but, uh, that took me two and a half years. Yeah. So I was measurably cracked in all this feel? stuff. And doing hamstring curls is fine. Thursday this week, I'll do hamstring curls. Monday was Nordics. Okay. So hamstring curls are fine. Notice this position right here. There's, this is nothing. There's no difficulty. A hamstring curl, there's a lot of difficulty at the top. Mm -hmm. So the hamstring curl is great for foundation, but this is great for getting freaky athletic and bulletproof. Why don't you try a few more? So the way down, structural to thicken up behind the knee. Outstanding. Nice. Now full break. And then, it's a, and then it's neural drive through the glutes. Outstanding. The, I mean, he's, he's elite, but you could already guess that based on his numbers. I'm so scared to do Nor this. Nor does it mean this is the only way to get strong hamstrings. But imagine when I started, I was dropping like a sack of potatoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And flop, I, couldn't, I couldn't do the Marty St. Louis on the way up. Right. So this gives someone some measurement, not just, oh, I did 100 pounds on the hamstring curl. I'm strong. Check your number. Yeah, why don't you do one more? Three sets, three to five reps works well. And then I'm gonna elevate this up for you. Okay. You'll see you can do it. Good. Give me one more. Give me one more. Come on. Yeah, nice. Very nice. Oh man. I'm so scared. Let me show one last thing on this and then, then we'll do yours. Okay. Super fast. Rather than thinking, oh, should I add weight or this or that? What I'm trying to do is get see how I'm trying to just dominate that. And that's so, that almost leads everything up. Rather than rather than there and then like yeah. going like that with yeah. a bunch of weight. When Marty does it, it's almost <laughs> This stays this in angle. In line with the hip and the knee all yeah. together. So my, and same with the way down. The way down is going to be hard. Even for him on the video, you can see him. It's working him down. Right. So rather than shoot for the moon, I got to get something. Rather than shoot for the moon, hold on, I'm going to I'm gonna need to get to that first. Yep. You can't lift your heavy head, so you got to do it. I just try to master it at higher levels. I'm scared. And this is open-ended. You probably have um, blocks in your gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. All right, you can do this. Yep. I know your numbers. So you can definitely do it, and you know how to fire. So for Olympic. Oh, let oh, me make this one right. higher for you. Um, <laughs> my cankles can't fit in. There you go. There you go. Good. So it's two distinct parts. There's no rush. Okay. First, just feel that no tension rush, on the way down. No rush. And particularly, kids could start this young. Nice. That was really nice. Really nice. Good. Now take your time and it's going to be big neural drive like the top of a snatch. Oh, all right. The, that was good. Okay. Hamstring was powerful. Try to get that glute. Okay. It almost like you're fully relaxed at the bottom. That's what he, you told me, right? Yeah, the glute will contract so that the abs lift off the bench. I can feel my middle of my hamstring going. Think, think like a yeah. snatch. Okay. And just do and keep my it. My 10-year-old son can do these. I better be able to do them. Yeah. <laughs> Kids start out pretty good at them. Yeah. Then as we get muscle dominant and lose ligament strength, yeah. we get really weak at these. So this is a great way to work on the, the ligament strength of the knee. That's why Jake beats my 10-year-old to do these every time he trains. <laughs> just kidding. Nice. Nice. Very good oh. job. Full break. Now big glute contraction. Yeah. 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 That was perfect right there. Good. Good, rest, rest. Oh, I'm lightheaded, holy. I never thought someone like you could do that. Third, third exercise in the I'm circuit. So, with this machine, we flex the ankle. Yeah. With the Nordic, we flex the knee. Now we're flexing the hip. The cable gives me measurable load. 
our baseline standard is 20 reps with half body weight. Okay. And then freaks want to go more than that. So I now have for the hip flexor, and I will show you this. This company makes something you can attach a dumbbell to your foot, the monkey foot. Yeah. So the monkey foot is really cool. This is what we did before the monkey foot existed. So right here, I'm thinking to get my upper thigh to touch lower abs. So I'm just thinking, I'm just thinking reverse squat. We could do this Similar to the tibialis, way. you want to take these puppies to tap out. So it's not a drill, it's a measurable strength progression. Now okay. notice, you could go all the way down, or you could catch it right there. Okay. I find it's a little tougher if I catch it, stay in this zone. It's like constant tension. Yeah, but it doesn't really matter. Just drive until you can't get your knees up. Okay. probably 20 or a little over. So that's the demo. It's very simple. It's intuitive. We're going to make you work a touch over since he's such a, he's such a, a freak. freak. Since I'm such a <laughs> this, is, this, is, this is the third way to get a little less knee pain when you drop down into that position. Okay. Good. Now should he, how should his lower back be when he's positioned? Don't even have to think about it. Okay. Yep. Yep, try this one. Good. Two. Catch it. Yep. Three. Good. Four. Five. Beautiful. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Twelve. Good. Get up. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Yep. Get up. Sixteen. There you go. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. Good job. So this is the only ab work I do. Okay. I don't, I don't do drills. Yeah. That was insane. I don't do crunches and things of that nature. Maybe that'll fix your diastasis. Oh, dude, something. Oh, yeah. I think, <laughs> watch out, those, the <laughs> knees won't come up. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I squatted 470 pounds, <laughs> and my legs feel horrible right now. <laughs> Oh, shit. Holy crap. Am I using the same way? To yeah, yeah, we'll just stick with this. Okay. I think most of us are weak below the belly button. That's the purpose of this. Good. 46. Seven. Seven. Nice. Eight. Good. Get them up. Nine. Ten. Eleven. This is how you're going to sprint until the end of time. Thirteen. Fourteen. Nice. Fifteen. Sixteen. Don't let the heels touch. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nice. Get up. Nineteen. Twenty. Good job. Good job. Oh yeah. So every time, every time you Olympic weightlift, you're triple extending. Ankles, knees, hips, all extending. And that's the, that's the big word used, triple extension. So, or every time we push the sled, triple extension. Yeah. Triple extension are the big words used. Now let's say you're me. You can't grab the rim and you're 20 years old. And you start working triple extension. And you start improving triple extension but you don't do the opposites. So these are what are gonna allow you to, for an athlete to, to decelerate that force. Same here with the Nordic behind the hamstring. Or if you, get, if you get leg drive, but you lack that top end speed of the genetic freak. Well, that's because even if you match the triple extension of the genetic freak, the genetic freak has this all built up. Yeah, so this and was, they fire so much, yeah. so much more coordinated. Mm -hmm. So from doing laser time sprints and then measuring, so with this, Notice how you could go to tap out. Yeah. You can see how strong someone is on that. Imagine if I put another plate, or you can take any athlete, see how strong they are at hip flexion. And that was one of the biggest outliers of the guys who were super fast. The guys super fast, deadlift test was fine, didn't illuminate anything interesting simply because so many people already trained that. Right. So if, if, if one athlete naturally can deadlift a certain amount of weight, and the other athlete trains to deadlift that weight, but the natural athlete has hip flexors to match it. So that's why I became obsessed with this. And that's why it's not just a band drill or something. It's, it's like how you can make up some ground on the freak. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I had to find. I had to go through all the traditional stuff and then even getting into fixing my knees. But then these stopped some of those extra tweaks. These allowed me to be more like the freak athletes than just have the same squat number right right like one thing i was going to bring up was there's there's like three or four studies on 
uh, speed based training with sled. So like if you can get oh. like 50% decrement with a certain weight, you know, you can, you can see an increase in your velocity uh, and, and over eight to 12 weeks, that's gonna increase your speed. And I was starting to think, cause you, you were cueing that, I wanna go back to yeah. the beginning where you're cueing that jump, jump with this forward, drive and jump forward. I'd be interested to see, I know there's no research on it, but it's gonna be, it's gotta be the same patterning. It's gotta be the same types of, of neuro, neural drive is gonna be, you know, the drive for a sprint yeah. or, or a pulling for a sprint is gonna be very similar to the drive into, into a, you know, yeah. to dunk or to jump, to hit a layup or whatever, vertical jump, whatever it might be. Yeah. So I'm interested because- I think it's not that tapped into. Yeah, in it's, terms it's of the research. not at all. And oftentimes you're talking about strapping up and kind of running with the sled. Yeah. Um, Joe DeFranco really popularized using it heavy Heavy forward. sled drive, yeah. And I think that's super smart. We're just taking that idea. Mm -hmm. Then Charles Poliquin, in his book on the sled, when he talks about going backward for knee rehab, he says to increase the speed of the steps. And I yeah. was always like, what? You would think more weight, more weight, more right, weight. Right, right. But that's because as you go more weight, it turns into leaning. Yeah. If you look at the angle of the it's knee, it's more using your it turns load. into this more instead of this, yeah. where we're where we're weak there. And that's what we want to train. So we found this combination of Charles Poliquin and Joe DeFranco where we do the forward, starting nice and slow, yeah. and the backward, and then as the blood flow increases, then we ramp up intensity. So it's a, it's a no pain, but you end up working 10, 10 out of 10. Yeah. That's the goal. Can you, can, if you can pain free, get a 10 out of 10 pump in those muscles, right. then you can rehab like lightning. Right. Okay. while getting stronger. So then less pain, more strength, jump Better higher. performance, yeah. Exactly. Yep.